My name is Naruto Uchiha, and I will rule over the Leaf Village with my power. Believe it! What's up ladies and gentlemen, Neon Pow here, and this week we're doing What If Naruto Was in Uchiha The Movie Part 1. This will consist of all of the original Naruto storyline before Shippuden. Also guys, we're going to be doing a 1000 like goal because I see latent potential in every single one of you to be able to smash that like goal like it's nobody's business, because I know you guys are beasts. The more likes we can get on this video and overall, the more we can grow the POW fam community and get things popping. Also guys, if you have not joined the Discord server, link to that will be in the description underneath that like button. So you guys should definitely join so we can talk and it's a ton of fun. Also if you have not subscribed yet and you enjoyed today's video, make sure to do so with the notification bell. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. We begin the tale of a young boy that was born with the potential for greatness. This young boy was named Naruto Uchiha. Naruto was born into a Uchiha clan as one of two fraternal twins. His twin being Sasuke Uchiha and his older brother being Itachi Uchiha. As their father Fugaku was chief of the Leaf Village police force and the leader of the Uchiha clan, these boys had very big shoes to fill as they became full-fledged shinobi. However, before we begin the journey of Naruto Uchiha, we must first observe the setting in which the young Uchiha will be thrown into. As in canon, Minato still becomes the fourth Okage and marries Kushina. Kushina does indeed still become pregnant with a child, but this time, his name is Menma. However, this child, unlike many other children in the Leaf Village, was born talentless in Genjutsu and Ninjutsu. This information is, of course, unknown to Minato, Kushina, or anyone else since there was no way of telling. This child will be known as our Rock Lee in this universe to make it easier to reference. With this, we continue with the masked man attacking the leaf and using the birth of Lee as an opportunity to release the Nine Tails onto the leaf village since Kushina's seal would be the weakest then. The same happens with Minato and Kushina, saving Lee and Minato still sealing half of the Nine Tails inside of the young child. The village is saved, but Minato and Kushina are both deceased, leaving their young child orphaned. The third Okage arrived at the scene as late as ever and sees the horror that has taken place. He ends up taking in Rock Lee. As for Naruto and Sasuke, their big brother Itachi is protecting them from the chaos that is occurring in the leaf. The chaos passes and things seem to go back to normal in the leaf, or so it seems. Naruto and Sasuke grew up together looking up to their genius older brother. They train extremely hard to try to match in his power. Even though both of them are much smarter and stronger compared to their peers, neither can match up to Itachi. They are both jealous as their father pays little attention to them and seems to only care about Itachi. Naruto and Sasuke in terms of power and intelligence are similar to one another. However, they differ completely in personality. Naruto's character is more lax, carefree, jubilant and outspoken, while Sasuke's character is more strict, serious, kept to himself and quiet. Both being skilled Uchiha's, they are very popular among their peers, especially the girls. Some time passes, tensions between the Uchiha clan and Leaf begin to worsen. The rumor of a coup d'etat arises and causes panic in the Hokage's office. This leads Itachi to be instructed on enacting the gruesome mission. At around age 7 for the twins, both Naruto and Sasuke are heading back to the Uchiha clan one day. As they enter the clan, they feel that things are very off. Things are too quiet and a large presence of bloodlust is filling the air. They run around and see bodies of their fellow clan members everywhere. They are shocked and confused of what is happening and who could have caused all of this. The both of them rush to their home to check on their parents and to find Itachi. As they open the door, they see their parents lying on the floor, lifeless. They scream out to their parents, but get no response. They both then see Itachi standing over their bodies. They tell Itachi that they need to get out of there because someone has killed their entire clan. Itachi 
just turns around and says, Foolish little brothers, both of you are too weak. He uses his Tsukuyomi on Naruto and kicks Sasuke against the wall. The last thing Sasuke sees before he blacks out is Itachi kidnapping Naruto. A few minutes pass and Sasuke finally wakes up. He is dazed and in pain from Itachi's attack, but remembers what Itachi did and he needs to rescue Naruto. He searches desperately for where Itachi could have gone and eventually finds his trail. Sasuke catches up to Itachi and sees him holding his sword against Naruto. Sasuke yells at Itachi to stop this and tells him that this is not who he is. Itachi just laughs and says to Sasuke that he must have been terribly mistaken because he has planned to get rid of the wretched clan for years and he has hated both Naruto and Sasuke. He then says if he wishes to save Naruto, he needs to be strong and stand up against him. However, Sasuke is just frozen with fear, unable to move. The quiet boy is drenched with so many emotions right now that his body can't even react. Itachi just looks with disgust and says he will never be able to defeat him in that current worthless state. He then takes his sword and pierces Naruto's gut. The gushing of blood and seeing his brother's lifeless body in front of him snaps something inside of Sasuke's mind. Every pent-up emotion he has stored over his lifetime finally gets released and he awakens his Sharingan. Sasuke sprints towards Itachi to get him away from Naruto, but he is unable to hit him. Itachi just kicks Sasuke to the ground and says if he ever wishes to avenge his clan and his brother, he will need to hate him. Through hate alone will he gain the power needed to avenge everyone. As Sasuke yells and gets up to counter, Itachi is nowhere to be found. Sasuke is filled with so much rage and sorrow that he can't think straight. He just picks up Naruto's motionless body and begins sobbing. However, he notices that Naruto is still breathing. He believes there might be a chance to save him and he rushes to the hospital. Sasuke has lost everyone dear to him and he refuses to lose the last piece of family he has left. As he gets to the hospital, he gets Naruto administered and then passes out from all the emotional trauma. We last left our young Uchiha's in complete turmoil and distress as they were trying to survive physically and mentally from the Uchiha massacre. Sasuke has just passed out from all the mental and emotional exhaustion after bringing his brother, Naruto, to the hospital. As Sasuke is out of commission, Naruto is barely clinging to life. Our young Uchiha is fighting to stay alive as he doesn't want to leave Sasuke in this world yet. He needs to avenge his fallen family. Even with all this willpower, Naruto's physical state is not holding out too well. The only thing the medical ninjas can do is attempt to stabilize Naruto's current condition. As all of this is occurring, the third Okage gets word of the news of the massacre and the state of the two surviving Uchiha's. He is glad Sasuke is doing well for the most part, but is worried about Naruto. He doesn't want to let the poor boy die, but the Okage doesn't know what to do. However, from the dark corner of the room, Danzo emerges with a cynical smile. He informs the Hokage that his organization, Root, may have someone that could heal Naruto and keep him from dying. All he asks is that Naruto is left under his custody for a few weeks, for rehabilitation of course. The third Hokage can't figure out what Danzo could be scheming, but he sees that this is the only option to save Naruto so he gruntingly accepts Danzo's offer. Danzo thanks to Hokage and grins as he enters the shadow again. Danzo then tells his subordinates to go extract Naruto right away. They go and bring Naruto to Root's medical ward, which is just a lab where Danzo has some of his subordinates conduct experiments. He hoped that Naruto would be an intriguing test subject. He had overheard Itachi talk to the third Okage how Naruto was different from the other Uchiha's and even to his twin brother. He could always tell something at birth had changed Naruto genetically as if it was originally supposed to be someone else. This news made Danzo intrigued as he had countless problems in the past trying to find a suitable host for Hashirama's cell because of the genetic errors. So with Naruto being different as Itachi had said, Danzo had high hopes for positive results. 
However, he couldn't believe that Itachi would make it so easy for him to extract Naruto by stabbing the boy. With that, the implantation of the cells began. Many long and gruesome hours passed for Naruto. The poor boy not only experienced emotional and physical pain from his older brother, but now he had to endure torturous experimentation. Naruto regained consciousness a few times during the procedure, but just felt cold and alone and had no clue where he was, and then just passed out again. A few days had passed and the implementation of the cells were complete. However, Naruto wasn't waking up. Danzo angrily smacks his teeth and curses that Itachi as he made him waste his efforts on the Uchiha trash. Little does Danzo know, but Naruto is currently fighting a mental battle. Naruto just sees darkness. He sees his late family and Itachi killing them. However, all of a sudden, a burst of light comes and he sees his brother, Sasuke. The training they did together and the pact they swore to one another to become stronger and always stick together came through Naruto's mind. This hits Naruto hard and he realizes he can't leave Sasuke in this world alone to fend off against Itachi. He must be by his brother's side to help him. Naruto then finally wakes up yelling. Danzo, in complete shock, is excited to see Naruto awake and surprised that the cells had changed the boy's appearance slightly, making him have white hair. Regardless of the change, Danzo approaches Naruto to tell him what's going on. He explains to Naruto that he was fatally wounded by Itachi, but fortunately, him and his subordinates were able to revive him because of their expert medical knowledge. He further tells Naruto that his brother, Sasuke, is alive and well. This makes Naruto excited and he gets up and demands to see him. Danzo tells Naruto that he will see him in due time, but now he has to stay here and recover some more. Naruto says he feels fine and attempts to run, but Danzo grabs him. He then proceeds to use Kutua Mutsukami with the Mangekyo Sharingan he stole from Sushui Uchiha on Naruto. This was a genjutsu of the highest grade, manipulating Naruto's mind without the boy even realizing it. This was Danzo's plan from the beginning. He had planned on Naruto surviving the procedure and being able to eventually tap into a known wondrous power. He wanted to make sure this power would not fall into the wrong hands, so he knew he would need to control Naruto. With Kotoa Mutsukami, he could make sure Naruto was under his control without Naruto or anyone else realizing, basically making him a sleeper agent. Naruto is now calmed down and because of his altered memories, asked Danzo if he could be trained by him. His ambitions now is to become the strongest and become the Hokage so that the Uchiha incident doesn't happen again. He also wants to make sure to eliminate Itachi so that he may not attempt to harm the village anymore. Danzo is smirking as he cannot believe how well the Genjutsu worked. He could groom Naruto for the Hokage spot and manipulate him from the shadows and make sure the leaf becomes the strongest village now. A week passes and at this time Naruto has become more adjusted with his newfound power. With the implementation of Hashirama's cells, Naruto can start to use a bit of wood style jutsu and now has increased healing, not to mention the boost it gave to his overall power. Danzo has run out of his time limit with Naruto and needs to send them back, so he can start in the academy with the rest of the children. He doesn't want to raise suspicion. Before he drops off Naruto, Danzo tells him that he cannot tell anyone about his special training, not even Sasuke as he could put the others and himself at risk. Naruto, knowing that this could be true, hesitantly agrees, even though he wants to tell his brother Sasuke the good news, but he just has to wait. Naruto finally sees Sasuke at the academy, and they embrace, both teary-eyed since it had almost been two weeks since they saw each other. Sasuke tells Naruto that he was so worried for him. The third Hokage had informed Sasuke that Naruto was going under a special medical procedure to save his life, but was left in the dark for the rest of the time. Sasuke asks Naruto what they did to him, but Naruto has to invertedly lie by saying that they had a special medical ninja that was familiar with extreme stab wounds, refraining from telling Sasuke about the cells. Since Sasuke knows Naruto very well, he feels something off, but doesn't say anything as his brother might have his reasons for not telling him everything. 
he is just glad to see Naruto alive. Sasuke then tells Naruto that he hasn't been slacking these past couple of weeks either. He has mastered fireball jutsu and has almost flawless chakra control. Both brothers are happy for each other and hope to keep pushing each other to get stronger. The two of them enter the academy. Many years pass and the two boys excel massively, especially Naruto. Both could have easily passed the academy two years earlier. They are both leaps and bounds stronger than their other classmates. At this point, Sasuke has been able to access his Sharingan and effectively hold it since he remembered he activated it all those years back during the fatal accident. Naruto has also come a long way. He hasn't achieved the Sharingan like Sasuke yet, but he has been able to control his wood style more and buff his overall power due to the cells. It is now the day of the graduation finals. Sasuke and Naruto are excited to finally be able to become full-fledged ninjas. However, they realize that today has been a lot quieter and less annoying. They then realize why. That pink-haired girl that always stalks them isn't there. They don't complain about her absence, but find it weird that she would skip an important day like this. Sasuke then says he heard her talking to a Chunin ninja about acquiring some forbidden scroll that would shrink her forehead. Sasuke had to miss it earlier since he thought it sounded ridiculous and no intelligent person would fall for that. Guess he was fooled. They both sigh and head out to find the girl. Sakura has just collected a scroll and is attempting to read it to find the forehead reduction jutsu. Mizuki sees this and throws his demon wind blade to eliminate the girl. As Naruto and Sasuke arrive, they are too late. The shuriken slices Sakura straight in half. The two see Mizuki approaching her body. The Uchiha's can't let this injustice pass and they attack the Chunin at full strength. The surprised Mizuki gets immediately KO'd. The boys were surprised to have taken him down so easily. However, there's no time to ponder. They pay their respects to their fallen classmate and announce what had happened to the Okage. The Okage is saddened to hear they lost a young ninja, but thank the boys for what they did as things could have gone much worse. Naruto and Sasuke then go on to pass their graduation exam and become Genin. Last episode, Orochiya brothers finally graduated from the academy and became Genin. They also saved the Leaf Village from potential destruction by capturing Mizuki and returning the Forbidden Scroll to the Hokage. We can now resume the life of Naruto Uchiha. It is a big day for a Genin. This is the day the teams get assigned. All team assignments are the same as in canon. However, Team 7 gets some pretty big changes. Naruto and Sasuke are still assigned, but alas, Sakura is no more, and there are no more ninjas in the class to take the spot. That's at least what they think. A few moments pass, and a never before seen young ninja enters the classroom. Earlier, Danzo had discussed with the Hokage about the recent incident in the village, and how they had lost a young ninja. He recommended, so Team 7 would not fall behind the rest of the teams, that he could provide one of his young root ninja to join the team. This solution would not only take care of the shortage, but also help Naruto and Sasuke become stronger as they both scale much higher in power than their other peers. The Hokage doesn't feel any malicious intent from Danzo, so he agrees to this idea. This then leads to Sai joining Team 7 with Naruto and Sasuke. Both Naruto and Sasuke are suspicious of this new ninja, especially with him forcefully trying to act friendly with them. However, they aren't against this new ninja joining as they hope he would provide with a worthy challenge unlike the others. Team 7 ends up waiting many hours after all other teams have been dismissed with their senseis. Finally, Kakashi sensei enters the room. He notices that Naruto and Sasuke are doing mental training while Sai is just drawing. He is surprised to see such a mature group in front of him. He then smiles and introduces himself. He then takes them up to the rooftop to do introductions. Sai goes first and just says in a robotic and obviously memorized tone that he wants to work hard to get strong and become friends with his teammates. Kakashi just pauses and says good. Next goes Sasuke, who says he wants to kill a certain someone so he can revenge his clan. This leaves Kakashi intrigued and curious on what Naruto will say now. Sasuke is also intrigued since he actually hadn't gotten a chance to talk to his brother about his ambitions. Naruto then goes and says that he wants to become the most powerful ninja in history. 
and become the next Hokage of the Leaf Village so that he can stop the injustices and weaknesses in the Leaf Village. Both Kakashi and Sasuke are surprised to hear this, Kakashi being surprised since he did not expect a young ninja to have such an oddly sophisticated goal. Sasuke being surprised as he never once heard his brother talk about becoming the Hokage. He thinks it makes sense since Naruto was always popular with people, but was confused on why Naruto didn't tell him before. This adds to Sasuke's suspicion. Next, Kakashi Sensei tells the team to meet at the training ground tomorrow morning for a test. It is the next day and the team is waiting for Kakashi, as usual. He eventually shows up and tells them that they will be doing a bell test where they have to try to steal the bells and if they fail the task, all of them will have to be sent back to the academy. No one on the team is phased about the news as they all know their strengths. Kakashi takes out his book and begins the test. None of our young ninjas make a move, which makes Kakashi a bit confused. However, as he looks around, he notices that two drawn looking figures come up from the ground and hold them in place. As this is happening, Sasuke releases a giant fireball at Kakashi. Kakashi has to actually put up his book to counter this surprise attack. As he attempts to escape, he sees the fireball break into smaller balls of fire spreading the blast radius. Kakashi manages to use his substitution to get out with just some minor burns on his clothes. However, he is wondering why his students are just standing there and then realizes that his bells and Naruto are missing. He then sees Naruto behind him with the bells. What had happened was after Sasuke shot his flames at Kakashi, he activated his Sharingan to get a better view of Kakashi and his movements. He then relayed this information to Naruto who was able to get a precise location of where he could use his wood style to stem out from the ground and grab the bells without Kakashi noticing. This is also why Sasuke separated his fireball to not burn the bells. This leaves Kakashi in complete shock not only from their individual performances, but their splendid teamwork. Kakashi thinks to himself that maybe he shouldn't have taken his team so lightly and actually started trying from the beginning. Regardless, he is very happy with the results and passes them all. Naruto and Sasuke give each other a fist pump and try to give one to Sai, but he just stands there awkwardly. As the Genin are interacting with each other, Kakashi is thinking to himself. He heard the rumors that the Uchiha boys were advanced for their age, but he had no idea one of them had already fully mastered the Sharingan and the other could use wood style. Also, he hasn't heard anything about the Sai boy, but he sees promise in him as well. This gives Kakashi some great ideas for future training. Later that night, we see Sai sneaking out to meet with a certain someone. As we get a better look, we see that certain someone is Danzo. Sai has been keeping tabs on the Uchiha boys, specifically Naruto for Danzo. Danzo is glad to hear of Naruto's latest performance and his advancement with wood style. He tells Sai to keep up his good work and not to give his position blown as he could jeopardize their mission. Sai nods his head and disappears. Danzo is now left alone and is just smirking. He says to himself that in due time, that Uchiha will be the perfect pawn. Weeks passed with the new Team 7. Just like other Genin, they too were tasked to do boring odd jobs around the leaf. However, this all changes when the Hokage calls them into the office. Kakashi had specifically talked to the Hokage to see if he could assign his team with a harder mission as he knew they all needed the real live experience. The Hokage agrees and assigns them a C rank mission as he has witnessed their phenomenal performance. Naruto and Sasuke really want to do more advanced missions but are glad they can go on a real mission so that they can put their training to work. Sai just stands there looking indifferent as usual. And with that said, the bridge builder escort mission begins. Team 7 heads on their path towards the land of waves. The team is quiet other than Naruto who is talking, almost interrogating the bridge builder. The bridge builder is obviously getting frustrated with all the questions. Before he gets to say anything, two Chuni ninjas attack and kill Kakashi. Everyone but the bridge builder is freaking out. Everyone gets into formation and begins readying an attack on the Chuni. Sasuke activates his Sharingan and attacks one of them. Using Shuriken Jutsu and a superb Taijutsu, he is able to neutralize the ninja. Naruto attacks the other ninja, he uses his wood style to immobilize the ninja and sends a fireball Jutsu which burns the Chunin, knocking him out. Kakashi then pops up and congratulates the Genin on their splendid work. 
Sai doesn't react and Sasuke just smacks his teeth. Naruto is the one that complains to the Kakashi for trying to pull such a lame escape, making them do all the work, but he's happy that they finally get some action. Team 7 then interrogates the ninjas. They learn they were hired to eliminate the bridge builder and that there could be more mercenaries nearby. The team doesn't have time to worry about the bridge builder now. They just try to continue the escort mission, but are now on high alert. Sai, using his expert detective skills, notice a presence in the bush. With more investigation, they find there to be a rabbit. However, this rabbit isn't from this region and this puts all of them on high alert. They then notice a giant blade flying at them and they all disperse. The high level mercenary ninja Zabuza enters the scene. Kakashi thinks for a second and remembers the exceptional abilities of his team. He has faith in his team to help him with this enemy. He tells Sai to protect the bridge builder and give back up with his drawing jutsu while he instructs Naruto and Sasuke to directly support him. Kakashi tells them this mission has been elevated to an A rank mission if not an S and should be taken seriously. As he says this, he reveals his Sharingan. Both Naruto and Sasuke are completely shocked to see this, and they don't know how Kakashi possesses this power. Regardless, there's no time to think about it. Sasuke activates his Sharingan, and Naruto readies himself. Zabuza, originally super cocky, is now starting to show slight hesitation due to going against two ninjas with Sharingan, but he is still confident that he can take care of some brats and Kakashi. Zabuza begins creating two water clone jutsus to attack Naruto and Sasuke, and then he charges at Kakashi. The fierce battle ravages on. Kakashi and Zabuza duke it as usual, with Kakashi trying to get inside Zabuza's head. Naruto and Sasuke end up doing what they know best and combining their firepower and heads together. With Sasuke's Sharingan and Naruto's exceptional reflexes, they are able to dodge the water clones relatively easy and evaporate them using a giant combined fireball jutsu. However, as they look at how Kakashi Sensei is doing, they see Zabuza has him trapped in a water prism jutsu. Zabuza is laughing and saying how he has the upper hand. Naruto and Sasuke just look at each other and smirk. Zabuza is confused on why the brats are so confident. Simultaneously, Sai draws and sends out a flock of birds to distract Zabuza. As this happens, Naruto and Sasuke releases their shuriken jutsu infused with lightning chakra. Zabuza is completely overwhelmed by the sheer amount of power coming at him, which forces him to release Kakashi so he can dodge. However, as he does this, the shuriken bounce off each other and reverse directly at him, hitting him directly in his leg and electrocuting him. This leaves a worn out Zabuza versus Naruto, Sasuke, and a slightly tired out Kakashi. The fight is looking very bad for Zabuza until all of a sudden he gets pierced with a needle and collapses. Team 7 is very confused on what just happened and who just did that. Then all of a sudden a shinobi who looks to be an Anbu from the Mist Village appears. He says he has been tracking down Zabuza and was ordered to terminate him on sight. Kakashi goes to check Zabuza's pulse and he feels nothing, so he leans towards trusting this shinobi. The Anbu leaves with Zabuza's body. Kakashi is relieved that everyone got through the battle in one piece. Since Naruto, Sasuke, and Sai all helped Kakashi tremendously in the battle, he didn't have to expand as much chakra, so he does not pass out, but is just very tired. The bridge builder is grateful for all of them now and invites them to all rest at his home, so he can tell them the complete truth of what's going on. A day passes and the team has recovered. Since the whole team already knows about basic chakra control, which allows them to climb trees and walk on water, Kakashi looks to train them personally. Sai doesn't care about the training, so he goes off to do his own things while Naruto and Sasuke stay with Kakashi. Kakashi noticed that these two Uchiha's could already manipulate lightning nature to infuse into the kunais during the fight against Sabuza, so he tells them that they can take it a step forward and manifest lightning into their hands. Kakashi shows them the Chidori. Both Naruto and Sasuke are super excited to start learning this new powerful attack. A week passes and both Genin have come close to mastering this jutsu, as they both already had experience with manipulating their chakra. However, they both have their flaws. Sasuke using his Sharingan was able to grasp the implementation of the technique fairly quickly but needs to work on his speed and endurance to properly be able to use it. Naruto on the other hand already had the endurance and speed to handle the jutsu but is having trouble holding the jutsu's form since he has to manually figure it out. 
During this time, Kakashi also figures out that Zabuza is still alive and that they were bamboozled. The team is now ready as they will get and head out to the bridge with the builder as they know that Zabuza will use that chance to try to surprise attack them. After a few minutes, a fog starts to form. Zabuza tries to go directly for the bridge builder and slash him in half, but the Geni quickly move him out of the way and Kakashi kicks Zabuza in the face. As this is happening, the Geni actually gets surprise attacked by Haku and Naruto and Sasuke get separated from the rest of the group. Haku, knowing the full extent of the Uchiha's power, knows he cannot hold back on them if he wishes to be the perfect tool for Zabuza. He forms the ice crystal mirrors immediately around the Uchiha's, not giving them any time to react and trapping the boys. We last left off, Team 7 split in two. Kakashi and Sai have to protect the bridge builder and fend against Sabuza, while our two Uchiha's twins have to survive against a fully powered Haku and his Kekka Genkai. Will our team be able to get out of this situation alive? Let's delve into the video and find out. Kakashi and Sai are fighting Zabuza through the intense fog. While things may be looking a bit shaky over there, as in canon, Kakashi has a plan to defeat Zabuza. However, he is more worried about Hinato and Sasuke as he senses a great power with Haku that is much greater than Zabuza. We move over to our twins. They have just been captured in the crystal ice mirrors. Haku has started throwing needles at our young Uchiha's, and to his surprise, Naruto and Sasuke have been able to dodge all of them so far. Naruto with his suburb reflexes and speed, and Sasuke with his activated shotting gun. Even if the Uchiha's are handling themselves pretty well now, they understand that they can't keep this up for forever and need a way to escape. They try countless tactics to injure Haku, but he's just too fast. Naruto even tried to use his wood style to surprise attack him, but he just couldn't activate his wood fast enough. As good as Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork was, they couldn't sync up well enough to counter Haku. If only they could combine their abilities, they could easily destroy Haku. An immeasurable amount of time passes for our Genin, and we can start to see their endurance and chakra lacking. Especially with Sasuke since he has been using the shotting gun and does not have the reserves of chakra like Naruto does from Hashirama's cells. Both the Uchiha's have been injured from Haku's needles, but unfortunately, nothing lethal so far. Haku thought he could defeat these Genin relatively quickly and assist Zabuza, but he sees that he now needs to change tactics if he ever wishes to be the best tool for his master. Since he senses Zabuza needs his help, Haku turns his focus to the Uchiha who seems the most exhausted, Sasuke. If he can take out one at a time, he will be able to end this battle quicker. Haku sends a flurry of needles towards Sasuke. Sasuke easily sees this attack coming his way and attempts to dodge. However, to his surprise, he feels a sharp pain throughout his entire body and he falls to the ground and his shotting gun begins to flicker off. As Sasuke thinks this is the end for him, he hears the needles begin to tear flesh. However, he didn't feel it hit him. He then slowly looks up and sees Naruto standing before him, completely covered in needles and dripping with blood. Sasuke yells and asks why Naruto got in the way. Naruto just smiles and says he couldn't just stand there and see his brother take that hit. He would never forgive himself. Naruto then collapses to the floor. Sasuke moves to Naruto and holds his brother, sobbing from all the grief and anger. He is so mad that yet again he wasn't strong enough and his brother had to take the lethal hit for him. Sasuke almost lost Naruto before and now it was for real. He cannot comprehend anything anymore and he's losing his senses. He begins yelling and smashing the ground, then just snaps. Sasuke's eyes change form and he feels this overwhelming power and hatred blow out from inside of him. Sasuke begins to form this purple aura around him and a skeleton begins to form. The skeleton releases a powerful burst and destroys all of Haku's crystal ice mirror, which also catches the boy by surprise. Haku is unable to comprehend this insane power. Sasuke begins to approach the fallen Haku, but before he can lay another attack, he feels a sharp pain in his eyes and he collapses. This new power was too much for him at the moment. However, even if his visual prowess were exhausted, Sasuke's anger and willpower were not yet finished. He could never forgive the fiend that ended his brother. Sasuke, completely engulfed by hatred, begins charging at Chidori 
and runs towards Haku. Haku realizes that this is the end for him and begins seeing his life flash before his eyes. Before he knows it, Sasuke pierces through Haku's heart and he dies. Blood spills everywhere and Sasuke just sees a red darkness around him before he passes out. Kakashi senses that something very bad just happened over by Naruto and Sasuke and he needs to finish up things with Zabuza. As Sai distracts Zabuza, Kakashi's hounds break through the ground and shred Zabuza into pieces. Kakashi and Sai then run over to Naruto and Sasuke just to see a nightmare of a scene. Kakashi goes to Sasuke and sees that he's still breathing and is relieved. However, he then checks Naruto and sees things aren't looking too well. Naruto is still alive, but barely. He is losing too much blood and there's no way to heal him fast enough. Kakashi grunts at his ignorance. He should have helped the his getting sooner. Sai, without a word, gets down by Nanako and begins performing a set of techniques taught to him by Danzo just for this situation. He then injects Naruto with a syringe full of a mixture of Hashirama cells. The special chemical compound was made to increase the regenerative power of the cells already in Naruto. A few moments pass and Naruto begins to rapidly heal. And then he wakes up gasping for air. Naruto looks around and sees Kakashi and Sai and asks what happened. Kakashi updates Naruto on everything and says that Sasuke is badly beaten up but is only passed out. Naruto sighs with relief. The bandits end up showing up as well, but Sai discards them easily. Team 7 has finally completed their mission. The bridge builder thanks them for all their help and says that because of the great help those Uchiha boys were, he would name the bridge the Great Uchiha Bridge. Team 7 heads back to the Leaf Village. As they travel back, Kakashi begins pondering about the syringe that Sai injected into Naruto. He definitely knows something fishy is going on and will need to investigate it later. However, for now, he needs his team to rest up and recover from their big battle. After our team has recovered, Kakashi meets up with all of them to tell them that he has recommended them to enlist in the tuning exams as he knows all of them are more than qualified. Naruto and Sasuke are excited since they can test out the extent of their abilities against other strong foes. Sasuke is especially excited because he wants to try out his new visual prowess. He has refrained from telling anyone as he doesn't even know the implications of it yet. All he knows is that it resembles the eyes Itachi had all those years before and he hasn't determined if this is a good or bad thing yet. The team then heads over to the tuning registration area. They notice there is some commotion going on. They ask what's going on and find out some kids are blocking the entrance. Naruto and Sasuke then laugh and say who would fall for such a cheap genjutsu? They aren't even on the right floor, plus they can see these kids have some sort of disguise on for some reason. This leaves all the other Genin shocked and surprises the disguised upper level ninjas. They congratulate the Chias for unraveling their tricks so easily and then take their leave. As Team 7 is heading to the registration room, they are stopped by a ninja, Neji. Neji confronts the Uchiha's by snarkily saying that they only reveal the illusion to feed their egos. That trap was to stop the weak from entering the tuning exams. Sasuke doesn't like this kid's attitude, so he says to Neji he must have been too much of a coward if he wanted to let those ninjas deceive everyone. This angers Neji and both Sasuke and Neji throw a fist at each other. However, before they connect, a ninja with slick blonde hair emerges between them and blocks both of their punches without even flinching. This ninja is Menma, the nine tail Shinchuriki in our world or better known as Rock Lee. He gives Neji a glare and tells him that they don't need any more bad blood with our fellow comrades. He then looks at Sasuke and apologizes on Neji's behalf. He then says, Hi there, my name is Menma Uzumaki, but I go by Rock Lee. You guys must be the Uchiha twins I've heard so much about. I look forward to fighting you very soon. He then smiles and then leaves with his team. Naruto and Sasuke are now both intrigued by this new Lee fellow as they felt a strong aura coming from him. Team 7 signs up for the tuning exams and then begins to make their leave. However, they get stopped by Lee once more. He asks before they leave if he could fight one of them. However, he requests that they only use Taijutsu so things don't get too far. The Uchiha's agree since that sounds pretty reasonable. They both want to fight him so they play rock paper scissors to decide who to fight. 
Sai and Lee are just looking at each other while the Uchiha brothers are having an intense battle of their own. After a 20 match long game, Naruto finally wins with Rock. Naruto then asks Lee if he's ready. Lee promptly replies with a yes and then begins fighting. As the two begin to pick up the pace, it seems that both are evenly matched. Blow for blow, they are fighting and countering one another. Both Genin are smiling from excitement of finding someone that can keep up with each other. The both of them begin to move so fast that Sai can't even keep up and Sasuke has to activate his Sharingan to see their movements. Lee and Naruto end up going for one last full powered blow. They both strike each other and an enormous shockwave shakes the entire building and cracks the ground below their feet. Guy Sensei, who has been watching the fight from secrecy, makes his presence known and says, Alrighty, you two burning youth. I think that's quite enough for your fighting. <laughs> Lee, shocked to see Guy Sensei, says, Oh, but Guy Sensei, it was just getting good. Wait, hold up. What are you even doing here, Guy Sensei? Guy just says he was watching the fight to make sure things didn't go too far out of hand. He then says that he is impressed with both Lee and Naruto for their superb taijutsu. Naruto then approaches Lee and says that was a lot of fun and says he hopes he will be able to fight him at full strength in the future. They both give each other a fist pump and the two parties go their separate ways. Sasuke then asked Naruto if he could sense the immense power inside of Lee as they fought. He noticed it as he was watching with his Sharingan. Naruto then excitedly replies positively and tells Sasuke that he could be the perfect rival for us if Lee knows how to control that power. Sasuke smiles and says with more training they could be strong enough to finally challenge their older brother and avenge their clan. After Sasuke says this, Naruto just stops walking and starts to look conflicted. Naruto realizes he wants to avenge his clan because his family was everything to him, but he hears a voice in the side of his head that says he needs to protect the village. Everything he does is for the village. Sasuke then sees Naruto flustered and asks what's wrong. Naruto just snaps out of it and says, oh, uh, nothing. He just got sidetracked for a minute there. Sasuke knows his brother is hiding something from him, and he will figure it out. The first day of the Chunin exam begins. It is the written exam. Team 7 walk in and immediately sense a strong bloodlust coming from the corner of the room where a sand ninja with a giant gourd is standing. They make sure to keep him on their radar as he could be dangerous. A few moments pass and as in canon, they notice Kabuto getting attacked by some sound ninja and jump in to defend him. The sound ninja did not realize how terrifying the Uchiha twins were in person and they end up backing off for now. Kabuto then introduces himself and shows them his ninja info cards. The Uchiha's find this interesting and ask if they can find info on a ninja that goes by Rock Lee. They end up finding out that he is only able to use Taijutsu. This then makes them realize why he only wanted to use that form before. They also then see that Lee is the Ninetales Shinshuriki. The Uchiha's aren't sure what exactly that is, but they figured that that was the immense power they felt inside of Lee. They then ask Kabuto if he has any info on the sand kid with the gourd over there in the corner. He then reveals the card and says there isn't much info, just that his name is Gara. They both thank Kabuto and get ready for the exam. As the exam starts, they realize that this test is a lot harder than they have ever seen, even with them being the top of their class. However, both Naruto and Sasuke realize that they both need to cheat without getting caught to pass this exam. Sasuke uses his Sharingan to mimic the movements of one of the very smart kids. For Naruto, since the desks were made out of wood, he uses the wood style to feel the vibrations of the pencils on the test to make out the answers for the exam. For Sai, Danzo had smuggled the answers earlier and Sai just memorized them. All of Team 7 passes the written exam with flying colors. We now move over to the forest of death part of the exam. Team 7 pays close attention to the rules and distribution of the scrolls. Sai does some reconnaissance and figures out who the easiest targets are. However, Naruto and Sasuke aren't too worried about the easiest targets but are more excited about going for the stronger opponent so they can really get a chance to test out their abilities. Sasuke especially wants to fight Gata as he felt a similar presence as to Itachi that horrific night all those years ago. The alarm rings and our getting are off. We last left of our getting acing the written part of the tuning exams. They are now readying themselves to begin the force of death part. 
Both Naruto and Sasuke are eager to find strong foes so they can test their abilities and get stronger. Sai, on the other hand, just wants to get this exam over with. The siren begins to initiate the test, and Team 7 is off. As Team 7 moves throughout the forest, they hope to just run into some ninja to fight. However, oddly enough, they find no one. It seems almost like everyone is trying to avoid them. Sasuke realizes this and says that if things keep up this way, things are going to get very boring. Plus, they won't get the scroll they need. Naruto agrees with this and asks Sai if he can draw a bird so they can get up in the air and survey the area. Sai complies and now Team 7 is airborne. As they are flying, they notice the sand ninja with the gourd, Gata, fighting some random leaf ninja team. Sai recommends they don't get involved with the team as he feels that even though they have a chance to win, the risk is not worth it. Plus, all of them can't help but feel something is very off about that Gata kid, as if he isn't fighting to be a Chunin, but instead, some other motives. As Team 7 chooses to find another team, they hear a blood hurling scream below. Gata is toying with one of the shinobi and crushing his limbs with his hand. They then see Gata completely engulfing one of the shinobi in the sand. The Uchiha's know it wouldn't be smart to interfere, but they can't stand this injustice as it reminds them of the Itachi incident. Before Gara is able to crush the helpless ninja, the Uchiha's jump down and stop Gata's bloodthirsty attempt, saving the ninja. Both are standing fearlessly and angry in front of Gata. Sai, on the other hand, stayed above as he didn't agree with helping and see there wasn't any point to join in. Sasuke tells Gata that the torture is enough. Naruto looks around to see that Gata has already crushed two of the three other ninjas, which infuriates the young Uchiha more. Behind Gata are two other sand ninjas, Tamari and Konkuro, both of them looking a bit worried while looking at Gata. They both tell the Uchiha's that they shouldn't have jumped in, as Gata is uncontrollable right now and will kill anyone in his sight. Naruto and Sasuke aren't phased by this info at all, as they don't care anymore. Before the Uchiha's have any time to strategize, Gata jumps at Sasuke with his sand and attempts to grab him. Sasuke with his shotting gun dodges the sand. Gata may be predictable, but the speed of his sand isn't something to take light of. As Sasuke dodges, Naruto shoots out wood at Gata. To his surprise, Gata's sand quickly blocks it. Gata is now locked onto Naruto and charges at him. Naruto just smirks as he hoped Gata would blindly rush him. Naruto being in a giant forest uses this to his advantage and traps Gata's feet in place. Gata, who has never been really challenged, is surprised to have been trapped by such a simple jutsu. Naruto, of course, doesn't let Gata regain control. He has been working on experimental jutsu he was hoping on using on Lee because of his speed, but feels now would be even better. He uses his wood style to grab him and throw him like a slingshot in combination with a pressurized wind below his feet to increase his speed past the sound barrier. Gata San doesn't have enough time to react to Naruto's speed, and Garuto ends up getting pummeled straight in the face and thrown back a hundred meters. Naruto knows for sure that wasn't enough to take Gata out, but hopes that did some damage. As Gata slowly gets up, Duchias notice that Gata has a devilish smile, and his face is starting to chip away. Tamari and Kakuro know that this isn't good. They hadn't realized the Leaf Village had such formidable ninja that could even challenge Gata, let alone damage his sand armor. Gata begins laughing hysterically and releases a massive wave of sand from his gourd. However, before he can release it all on Uchiha's, his body begins to give out. He begins screaming in agonizing pain, then collapses. Tamari and Konkuro look at each other and say it must have been the beast trying to free itself. Then, all of a sudden, Sai jumps down, sweeps Konkuro off his feet, and steals their scroll. He then gets Naruto and Sasuke out of there. Konkuro is pissed and Tamari wants to stop Team 7, but they can't as they need to watch over Gara for now. Team 7 gets away. Naruto and Sasuke are confused and ask why Sai got him out of there. Sai just says that the battle seemed over and he stole the scroll so there wasn't any reason to waste time. The Uchiha's know he is right, so they don't say anything in rebuttal. They are glad to know that they have both scrolls and can start heading to the finished building. 
They knew they would be able to finish the test quickly, but they can't believe only one hour has passed since they started. As Team 7 is about to reach the HQ building, Size Bird gets shot down and all of them are falling below. They all manage to parkour down to safety, but they are now split up. They all wonder who could have seen and taken them down from above as none of them sensed any presence below. Sai and Naruto end up being confronted by the sound ninja from earlier, while Sasuke is confronted by a creepy looking ninja. This ninja as we know is Orochimaru. Sasuke can feel a very dark presence from this being and keeps his guard up and activates his shouting gun. This act only arouses Orochimaru even more. He then speaks to Sasuke and says that if he wants the power to defeat Itachi, he should join him. This actually catches Sasuke off guard as he didn't expect this random ninja to mention Itachi. Sasuke then replies and says what does he know about Itachi? Orochimaru then says with a slight chuckle, he actually worked and fought with Itachi, and if Sasuke comes and joins him, he can give him the knowledge and power to defeat him. For a split second, Sasuke is tempted by this offer, but then snaps out of it as he feels there's an ulterior motive this creepy ninja isn't telling him. Sasuke knows he can't waste any more time here and needs to regroup with his comrades. Sasuke knows that going head to head with Orochimaru won't work to his favor, so he thinks about using a jutsu he has discovered with his new Mangekyo Sharingan, but he needs to get closer since he is still not adept with it. Sasuke then bluffs and says that Orochimaru's offer does entice him and he begins getting closer. Before Orochimaru realizes Sasuke's plan, he yells, Amaterasu! and unleashes a black flame onto Orochimaru. This completely catches Orochimaru off guard as he never thought Sasuke unlocked the same visual prowess as Itachi. As Orochimaru is being consumed by the flame, Sasuke escapes. Orochimaru begins to shed his skin like a snake to escape the flame from killing him. Orochimaru may have survived the black flames, but is angered to have been fooled by the Uchiha brat and was unable to unleash his curse mark on him. But now Orochimaru wants Sasuke's body even more. Orochimaru with no chakra left takes his leave for now. Sasuke finally finds Naruto and Sai. They had just finished up defeating the sound ninja. After this, the team finally arrive at the center building and finishes the forest of death exam, being the first team there. Shortly after, Gata's team arrives, and both teams just glare at each other. The next team that comes through is Lee's team. Lee waves to the Uchiha's and congratulates them on finishing before them. He can't believe he slacked off and let the Uchiha's get ahead of him. After that, the rest of the team that survived the force of death trickle in. We now begin the preliminary fights of the Chunin exams. The matchups are much different than the original, but we shall focus on the important ones. The first matchup is between Sasuke and Kiba. This matchup goes completely to Sasuke as he didn't even need to use his shining gun to defeat Kiba. Poor Kiba, he can never just catch a break. We then move on to a pretty interesting fight. This fight will be between Naruto and Neji. Neji, still looking as disgusted as usual with Naruto, tells him that regardless of which Uchiha he fights, their clan's destiny is all the same. Just a bunch of worthless trash that was destroyed by just one lonely ninja. Sasuke, hearing this, is furious and wants to snap Neji's neck, but Kakashi stops him. Naruto, on the other hand, doesn't look phased one bit. He just tells Neji that the past is what it is, and we strive to make the future better. He then proceeds to look Neji dead in the eyes and tells him that he doesn't need to waste any more time on him. And then the fight begins. Naruto, not wanting to show any mercy to Neji, goes 100%. Almost instantaneously, Naruto gets behind Neji and kicks him in the back, knocking him down. Neji is surprised by Naruto's speed, but he shakes it off saying it was just a lucky hit. Neji then attempts to use his 64 palms on Naruto to knock out some of his chakra points, but Naruto easily dodges him. This frustrates Neji and questions how an Uchiha scum can possibly be outdoing him. Naruto then gets close to Neji, but Neji attempts to use his palm rotation. However, Naruto immediately grips Neji's arm and tells him it's over. Naruto, completely furious now, uses his wood style to suppress Neji's chakra and he collapses to the ground, causing Naruto to win the fight. Naruto then looks at the fallen Neji and tells him that if he keeps looking down on people and doesn't stop to consider to oneself, he'll never get anywhere with his life. We then move on to the matchup between Sai and a sound ninja. 
which Sai actually just wins automatically as the Sound Ninja surrenders out of sheer fear from what happened earlier. Next, we move on to the Lee and Gara fight. However, in our story, Lee and Gara don't fight yet. The random generator just happened to match these two ninjas with other people. In the end, each of them have their separate battles and both make it past the preliminaries, unsurprisingly. We can now conclude the preliminary fights. The eight genin that will move on are Naruto, Sasuke, Lee, Sai, Gara, Kankuro, Tamari, and Shikamaru. They will all be moving on to the final battle that will be held in one month's time. This will give all the genin time to rest, train, and prepare for the big battle. For Team 7, Sai says he will prepare on his own, meaning he will go back to Danzo and report his new updates and train at Root. Naruto and Sasuke, on the other hand, will be training under Kakashi and another surprise addition that will help our Genin, especially Naruto, enrich their abilities. We last left off our Chia twins finishing the preliminary fights of the tuning exams. They now have one month to rest and get significantly stronger if they hope to be able to impress the upper level ninjas spectating the fights and be promoted to Chunin. Naruto and Sasuke are now left to train under Kakashi in a mysterious ally of Kakashi's. He introduces himself as Captain Yamato. Before Kakashi Sensei can even say why Yamato is here, Yamato unleashes a wood style jutsu that impresses both Naruto and Sasuke. Neither of them knew there was someone else in the village that could have the same type of jutsu as Naruto. Kakashi now says that since introductions are finally over, they can finally get to work. They'll need to use every bit of time they have to get stronger and refine their abilities. During the training arc, Naruto and Sasuke will be training together only for Chidori training and sparring. For the rest of the time, Naruto will be with Captain Yamato working on upgrading his wood style, while Sasuke will be training with Kakashi for Sharingan training. Even though Naruto is excited to advance his wood style, he feels a bit left out on his Uchiha heritage since he has not been able to unlock and train with the Sharingan. Sasuke cheers up his brother by saying that he has always been a late bloomer and that when he does get it, it'll probably even surpass Itachi's visual prowess. Naruto just smiles and says he won't give up hope. He needs to work harder to make a world a better place. And with that, the Uchiha's begin. A week passes and the training is going great. However, for both the Uchiha's, their masters are starting to get very suspicious about their power. Sasuke, being as cautious as ever, has yet to tell Naruto or Kakashi about his Mangekyo Sharingan. Kakashi can obviously see Sasuke has been holding back, but he doesn't want to force anything out of Sasuke. So instead, he shows Sasuke a powerful visual jutsu he has discovered, the Kamui. This, of course, leaves Sasuke shocked and excited at the same time, knowing that his sensei also possesses the new form of the Sharingan. The showing gives him the courage to reveal his Mangenkyo Sharingan to Kakashi. Sasuke also shows Kakashi the black flames of the Amaterasu and how he can control it, then goes to show him the partial Susano transformation. This all leaves Kakashi in silence as he can't believe his young pupil has been hiding all of this power, but is glad Sasuke trusted him enough to reveal it. Sasuke goes on to mention that he would like to keep the power a secret from the others, especially Naruto, as he would feel it would be not fair for his brother who hasn't even locked the Sharingan. Kakashi agrees to that as it could cause unnecessary rivalry and hurt their teamwork. He then tells Sasuke that they can start training for real. Now we move on to Naruto. Naruto and Yamato seem to be getting along for the most part. Yamato is of course very curious on how Naruto is able to actually use wood style. He knows it couldn't have possibly been natural, especially with Naruto being an Uchiha. He ends up telling Naruto about his past so the young Uchiha might open up a bit to Yamato. Naruto ends up being astonished to find out that Yamato had experienced a similar torture as he did. Since Naruto's memories are slightly altered, he ends up telling Yamato that a special medical core injected an experimental cell regeneration into his body to save his life. It ended up working out, but now his body has slight alterations and he can use wood style. Naruto tells the captain that he wants to not let Sasuke know, at least not yet. He isn't sure how he would react if he heard someone altered his biology. Yamato can tell the boy isn't lying and just sighs. He then continues by saying there is no time to waste. The two now closer due to the similar past experience, train harder for the rest of the month. 
It is now the day of the tuning exams. All the examinees arrive and get ready for the battle. All but the Uchiha twins. Lee, who was excited to possibly face one of them, is sporadically running around looking for them. He knows nothing could have possibly happened to them, but it is unusual for them to be late for such an important event. Lee even goes to ask Sai where they are, but Sai just turns away and walks. They are nowhere to be found. Lee just hopes they show up for their fight, because funny enough, they are actually supposed to fight each other in the finals. The tuning exams end up starting without them. Fortunately, the first fight is between Shikamaru and Tamari. This fight goes similar to how it was in canon, with Shikamaru taking the win with a superb strategy. Next comes the fight between Sai and Kankuro, with the win going to Sai since Kankuro forfeited as he didn't want to reveal his trump card yet. Lee is now stressing out even more since he didn't expect the fights to go so fast, with still no Uchiha's to be found. The administrators are now a bit worried and are not quite sure what to do since both participants in the fight have not shown. The administrator ends up deciding to disqualify the both of them, but Lee jumps in and begs for him to just give them a few more minutes. He knows they'll be here. The admin sighs and agrees. A few minutes pass and the admin is about to disqualify them when suddenly both Naruto and Sasuke finally arrive with Kakashi and Yamato. The sensei apologize for being late and hope they can still fight. The administrator smiles and says you guys just made it in the last seconds. Take your places and get ready to fight. Naruto and Sasuke smile at each other and give one another a fist pump before they begin. They also both look and give thumbs ups to Lee. And with that, the fight begins. Both Naruto and Sasuke have fought with one another many times, but this is the first time they could finally let loose with the crowd. However, as they are fighting, what the other does not know is that both are actually holding back. Sasuke not using his Mangenkyo, and Naruto not using the full wood style arsenal. Both seem evenly matched, blow for blow the Uchiha's keep the fight going. Naruto is indeed slightly faster than Sasuke, but with Sasuke's Sharingan, he is able to read Naruto like a book. Each Uchiha knows the other's weaknesses and strengths. The fierce fight ravages on for 30 minutes. Neither seem to be letting up. Their training has without a doubt improved both of their endurances astronomically. The both of them know that if they don't finish this quickly, neither of them will have enough chakra to continue. They both charge up a fully powered Chidori and run at each other. They both clash and a giant thunderclap can be heard. The next thing as the audience sees the dust clear, both the Chia's lying on the floor. The admin looks at both of them and can't believe what he sees. Both the Chias have knocked each other out. Just as he is about to call a double knockout, Naruto begins standing up. Due to this, Naruto is declared the victor. Even with both the Chias holding back, the Hashirama cells inside Naruto had reacted to when Sasuke's Uchiha blood had come in contact with Naruto. Naruto then subconsciously absorbed Sasuke's Chidori and reversed it on him on the last second. This gave him a slight advantage in the end. Fortunately, Naruto had also used his new wood armor jutsu to protect both himself and his brother from any lethal blows. Sasuke slowly wakes up. He's pretty pissed that he lost, but says he'll make sure to repay Naruto later for that cheap trick. We now move on to the fight between Rock Lee and Gara of the Sand. Both Naruto and Sasuke feel a deep, ominous presence from both of the fighters, as if there are two monsters lurking deep inside Lee and Gara. The fight begins, and it looks like Lee instantly teleports all around Gara and begins attacking him from all angles. Gara's smug glare slowly turns into a shocked one as his sand begins to falter from Lee's impressive speed. Then, all of a sudden, Lee teleports below Gara and kicks him upwards straight in the jaw, knocking him back to the floor. Gara just gets up like a zombie and begins huffing and puffing and then begins laughing. He then quickly engulfs Lee with his sand and begins crushing him in a sand coffin. As Gata believes he has defeated Lee, Lee begins yelling with a large amount of chore and chakra beginning to flow out of him, exploding the sand coffin. The chakra quickly disappears. Both Naruto and Sasuke are shocked as they thought Lee didn't have any chakra. Lee then activates the third gate of life and charges at Gara, kicking him straight in the gut and making him cough up blood. After this, Lee kicks Gara straight in the head, knocking him out. 
everyone believes the battle is over, but as the dust clears, they see Gara has slightly transformed. Konko and Tamari know this is bad news. The attack on the leaf has begun way too soon, but they can't stop Gara if he begins going on a rampage. Gara then attempts to attack Lee, but he is still too fast for Gara. Lee tries to attack again, but notice that his attacks aren't affecting Gara anymore. Gata just begins transforming more, and now Lee begins to recognize the transformation. He knows that if Gata completely transforms inside the village, many people will die. With Gata completely taken over by his animal instincts, Lee uses his advantage to lure Gata farther out of the village. The attack on a village has begun. Naruto and Sasuke see what's happening around them and are completely enraged by the sights. Naruto's instincts to save the village kicks in while Sasuke flashbacks through the Chia massacre. Both the Chias go serious. They see Konkuro and Tamari attempting to follow Lee. Before they can, the Chia brothers instantly knock them out without hesitation. The two of them go and follow Lee in what's left of Gara. Before Lee can lure Gara any further, Gara starts to begin yelling, Enough! He is tired of playing games. He then completely turns into the giant Shukaku. Lee, now a bit worried as he is not sure how he can counter the behemoth feels two hands on his back. It's Naruto and Sasuke. They tell him not to worry, as it can take it from here. Naruto creates a giant wooden golem, while instinctively, Sasuke uses his Susanoo to cover the golem like an armor. Both, without saying a word, race to Gara to attack. They land a combined attack, which ends up putting Shukaku on the defensive. With the two of them working together as a unit, Gara doesn't stand a chance. As the two Uchiha's are about to strike the final blow, they hear Lee yelling, which snaps the Uchiha's back to their senses. They see Lee soaring past them with which looks to be an orange cloak. Lee then punches the sleeping Gata in the head, which releases him from this trance. Lee then just looks at Gata and touches his shoulder, causing all the sand around him to begin falling, ending the battle. However, even though the current battle has ended, our heroes wonder what is happening back at the village. We last left off Naruto, Sasuke, and Lee fighting together and defeating Gaara. Kankuro and Tamari end up showing up to retrieve Gaara. With all of them low on chakra and stamina and worrying about the Leaf Village, they don't run after them. They instead slowly make their way back to the Leaf to try to assist how they can. However, when they arrive, the invasion has ended with the death of the third Hokage. He had fought to protect everyone. After some time of mourning, the Genin that are all chosen to be promoted to Chunin are announced. We of course have Shikamaru due to his strategic abilities, but surprisingly, Naruto and Sasuke are also promoted. Sasuke due to his extraordinary visual prowess, and Naruto due to his impressive display of his wood style. Kakashi and Yamato congratulate the Uchiha's for their splendid work, and they don't mean just becoming Chunin but also by defeating Gara and helping to save the Leaf Village. We now move on to the next arc. As in canon, Tsunade is requested as the next potential Hokage after Jiraiya declines the offer. A team is formed with Jiraiya, Lee, and now an addition of Sasuke. He is recommended for the mission because of his tuning rank and shotting gun. Only one extra person could join the mission, and Naruto is a bit frustrated that Sasuke was chosen over him only because of his shotting gun. Even though he showed his skills during the tuning exams against Sasuke, he is being overlooked because of a power he wasn't blessed with. He then feels a sharp pain in his head and a voice echoing inside of him. This makes Naruto burst out of the Hokage office. Sasuke and Lee run after him to try to calm him down. But Naruto disappears too fast for them to catch up with him. Later that day, as Naruto is walking in a park, Sai finds Naruto and tells him that Master Danzo has requested his presence. Naruto is confused on how Sai even knows of Danzo, but he is currently so conflicted that he doesn't even pay much attention to Sai and keeps walking. Sai then tells Naruto that if he comes with him, they could help him unlock his shotting gun. This of course makes Naruto pause and then look at Sai. He then agrees to follow Sai to meet Danzo. Once Naruto arrives to Root, he asks why Danzo wanted to see him. He feels well and doesn't need any extra medical attention. Danzo then proceeds to ask Naruto if he has been feeling inferior and the pain of being weak. Naruto is quiet for a bit, but then replies yes. He is tired of always working hard 
but only being second to his twin brother just because he doesn't have the shotting gun. Danzo just smirks and says, if he accepts to train under him for a bit, he promises that he will be able to unlock his shotting gun. Naruto does feel a bit uneasy about all of this, but his hunger to achieve the shotting gun is overwhelming him, and he agrees to Danzo's request. As this is happening, Lee and Sasuke must get ready to leave for their mission. Since they can't find Naruto, they hope that he needs time to cool off. The two leave with Jiraiya to the local town where they heard rumors of Tsunade being spotted. As our two Uchiha's embark on their separate journeys, an unexpected ninja makes a return back to his old home. It's none other than Itachi Uchiha. He is looking for the Nine-Tailed Shinchuriki, Menma Uzumaki, aka Rock Lee. He ends up finding the group of Jonin, as in canon. However, this time around, Kakashi fares well against Itachi by using his trump card against him, Kamui. Itachi is taken back by Kakashi's Mangekyo since he wasn't aware of it and does actually take some damage in his leg. Since Kakashi is still working on perfecting his jutsu, it wasn't strong enough to immobilize Itachi and the two Akatsuki members retreat for now. They're happy to know that Rock Lee is currently outside the village and will pursue him once Itachi recovers a bit. The info that Itachi has been spotted reaches Danzo almost immediately. This new information is something he's been waiting for. This could possibly give Naruto the emotional turmoil needed to finally unlock his Sharingan. He then tells Naruto that Itachi has been spotted in a local city where Sasuke is and he wants to kill him. This makes Naruto furious that his older brother is returning to try to finish them off so soon. Without even a second thought, Naruto leaves the hideout and heads to the city. He knows he hasn't unlocked the Sharingan yet, but hopes the training he has done so far is enough to save Sasuke. At that moment, Lee, Sasuke, and Jiraiya are just exploring the city, looking for Tsunade. After a few hours, they can't find her and Jiraiya starts slacking off with his research. Lee and Sasuke end up calling it a day and they decide to use the rest of the day to spar. Their skills in both their base forms are on par with one another. Sasuke then asks Lee what was that orange chakra he kept seeing flowing out of his body. He thought he didn't have any chakra. At this point, Lee trusts Sasuke enough to tell him that he is a Chinchuriki and has a beast called the Nine Tails inside of him. Years ago, he learned how to tap into some of the beast's chakra to use as his own. His relationship with the beast isn't great, but he feels he is buttering up to him. Since Lee revealed his secret, he asks Sasuke what that giant purple skeleton power was during the Gata fight. Sasuke then sighs as he didn't want to reveal that power, but now looks like he has to since Lee already knows most about it. Sasuke explains his Mangekyo Sharingan. Lee is astonished by that insane visual prowess and tells Sasuke that they should have an all out fight one of these days for fun. Sasuke just chuckles and says, sure, what could be the harm? The two shinobi, now with a closer friendship, head back to the hotel. Once they arrive to try to get comfortable, they hear a knock at the door. They wonder who could that possibly be since Pervy Sage wouldn't be back so early. Sasuke touches the door, but before he opens it, he feels a familiar presence. He then yells at Lee to get ready to fight. The door explodes open and standing there is Sasuke's older brother, Itachi Uchiha, with Kisame. Itachi tells Sasuke to scram as he doesn't have time to play with them as they are only here for the Nine Tails Shinshuriki. Sasuke then yells at Itachi that he will not cower in fear anymore. He took his clan away from him, and almost his brother, he will not see his friend taken by his sorry excuse of an older brother. Sasuke attacks Itachi, and to Itachi's surprise, Sasuke is actually fast and his visual prowess is well developed. Due to Itachi's previous leg injury, this hinders his speed and Sasuke is actually able to land a blow on Itachi's face. The two start fighting. Kisame just says Itachi can play with his younger brother while he captures the Chichuriki. However, when he looks back, he sees Lee is gone. Lee then hits Kisame in the back, causing him to fly forward. Kisame tells the brat this was a lucky hit. He does question why Samahada, his sword, didn't react to Lee's chakra. Lee sees Sasuke also doing his best to fight off the other Akatsuki member. He knows that even though they are holding their own, if the two rogue ninjas get serious, they won't stand much of a chance. He must look for an opening to activate his gates so he can get himself and Sasuke out of his hotel. Sasuke, at this moment, is so furious with Itachi that he ends up activating his Mangekyo Sharingan subconsciously and begins transforming to his Susanoo. This obviously shocks Itachi 
as he would never have thought his younger brother would have achieved this power so young. However, poor Sasuke can fully turn. Sasuke feels a sharp pain in his eyes, and he collapses to his knees. For a second, Sasuke can only see darkness. Then he feels a sharp pain. Itachi has just kicked Sasuke in the gut, and is holding him up against the wall by the neck. He then tells Sasuke he has gotten strong, but he is still no match for him alone. He says that only with the combined power of both him and his brother, Naruto, can they hope to defeat him. Itachi is then about to use his Tsukuyomi on Sasuke, but before he can, Naruto arrives on the scene! The scene Naruto sees with Itachi holding up Sasuke by the neck infuriates the young boy and causes him to awaken a sleeping power inside him, his shotting gun. He then attacks using his wood style forest jutsu that engulfs the entire hallway with greenery, pushing Itachi off of Sasuke. Now seeing that Naruto is also strong and cares for his brother, Itachi is content. Itachi tells Kisame that they need to retreat for now as there has been too much disruption and Jiraiya is bound to show up soon. As Kisame and Itachi are running, Naruto yells and says he won't let him get away that easily. With his shotting gun, Naruto can fully utilize his wood style and predict the escape path that Akatsuki's are attempting to take, and he blocks it. However, as Naruto's running towards them, Itachi uses his Amaterasu to break an opening and escape. This angers Naruto, but he has to go check up on Sasuke as he saw he was bleeding from his eyes. Jiraiya finally arrives on the scene. Both Naruto and Lee update Jiraiya on what just happened. He is happy no one was fatally wounded and is proud of all of them for holding their own. Sasuke just needs some time to rest, but his eyes seem to have taken some massive damage, but nothing too serious at the moment. Jiraiya tells him that Tsunade is an expert healer and could possibly help Sasuke if they find her. From the distance, Sai is taking notes of the current situation and goes to update Danzo on everything, including Naruto's new development with his Sharingan. Until Sasuke recovers, Naruto says he will stay with the team as he doesn't know if Itachi will come back to try to kill them. Naruto, Lee, and Jiraiya eventually find Tsunade at a local gambling bar. They confront her to try to persuade her to come back to the Leaf and become the Hokage. But she of course just laughs at the idea and says it's a fool's job. This then triggers Naruto and he almost snaps at her, but is stopped by Lee, but Naruto's shotting gun is still activated. This display piques Tsunade's interest and says how could it she a brat ever hope to become Okage as their entire clan was looked down upon by the rest of the Leaf. Naruto tells Tsunade that he doesn't care what the rep his clan had before, he will make a name for himself and himself alone, separate to his heritage. Tsunade then invites Naruto outside to fight. She bets that Naruto won't even be able to lay a finger on her. Naruto furiously accepts the offer. They begin fighting and Naruto releases a small forest-like wave at Tsunade, which shocks her to see her grandfather's jutsu displayed by the Tsuchiha. She snaps back before just a nick of time before the jutsu can hit her and smashes through the wood with her immense strength. That was just a distraction laid by Naruto, and as Naruto is speeding to hit Tsunade, Tsunade tells Naruto to stop and uses her entire hand to stop the incoming blow. She thinks to herself that this Uchiha not only has the wood style and shotting gun, but the strength and speed to back it up. She then tells Naruto that she changed her mind and that she will be coming back and becoming Hokage. She then says since Naruto did technically touch her, she will also do any request asked by him. Naruto then looks at Tsunade and says, anything you say? He then proceeds to tell her that he wants her to heal his brother's eyes. Tsunade heals Sasuke as much as she can, but she could just only stop the bleeding and pain from Sasuke's eyes. She informs them that the damage done on Sasuke's eyes is so severe, even healing can restore them completely. She says that he should still be able to see and use his visual prowess normally, but further states that if Sasuke keeps using his more advanced powers excessively, he will go blind. This left both Naruto and Sasuke in silence, as they didn't know so much risk came from using the Mangekyo. Tsunade also has some unfinished business with Orochimaru that she ends up telling Jiraiya. Jiraiya can't believe Tsunade would have been so foolish to do this originally, but he is glad that now they have a chance to capture him for the evil deeds he has done. With plenty of time to prepare before they meet, Jiraiya and Tsunade create a game plan. Sasuke helps Naruto advance his Sharingan, and Lee practices controlling his tailed beast chakra with Jiraiya's instructions. The time has come to meet with Orochimaru. Tsunade acts as a decoy to lure Orochimaru and Kabuto in. 
However, to the villain's surprise, they get ambushed by everyone. The Sanin have an all-out battle with each other. Orochimaru, without the use of his hands, is going against two fully-powered Sanin, and gets overwhelmed and captured. Kabuto, who already knows he's outmatched, uses a strategic jutsu that lets him escape from the young shinobi. He has us to escape for now, and attempt to retrieve Orochimaru later. With Orochimaru in their custody, our group returns back to the Leaf Village. On the last episode, we left our Archias going against Orochimaru and Kabuto. With strategic planning, teamwork, and training, they were able to capture Orochimaru. With one of the biggest threats to the village apprehended, and a new Hokage appointed, Naruto and Sasuke looked to try to just relax and recover for a few days. Sasuke was against this, since he said they don't have time to waste when their older brother is still out there causing terror. However, Naruto mentions that some time to enjoy their life is good for their body and mind, and will in the end strengthen their resolve. Naruto specifically wanted to take it easy, so he could practice some meditating to ease his mind. Ever since he unlocked his gun, he has had more pains, and has heard more and more whispers inside his head. Furthermore, they also use their free time to spar and train with each other. Also, since Sasuke is very adept with his gun, at this point, he is training Naruto on how to increase his visual prowess. With Hashirama's cells and Naruto being a fast learner, he is able to unlock his three Tomoya Sharingan relatively quickly. However, what Urchias don't know is that the time of virtual peace is soon to end. Kabuto, in an attempt to retrieve Orochimaru, has requested Danzo's help. Danzo, even though he has ties with Orochimaru, would not assist in the release of the Snake Man. But he has a plan for the future of the village that Orochimaru is an integral part of it in its succeeding. He promised Kabuto to break Orochimaru out only if they comply with his request. Danzo being untrusting to Kabuto also uses his Kotoa Mutsukami on him to fulfill his end of the bargain without fail. The plan is set by these underworldly characters go into motion. While this is proceeding, Naruto and Sasuke receive a strange message from a black crow one day when they are training. As they open it, both Uchiha's faces turn pale, then red with anger. It is a message from their older brother, Itachi Uchiha. He has told them to meet them at a designated location for a family reunion, and to come alone. He said he would hate if they were interrupted. Both Naruto and Sasuke's blood are boiling as they are ready to go. However, before they run to the location, they stop by the hospital to at least check up and tell Kakashi Sensei what's going on. He is currently in a hospital due to the extreme strain of the fight against Itachi and using his Kamui. The Uchiha's tell their sensei that Itachi has contacted them and they have been preparing for this day and that nothing can stop them at this point. Kakashi sighs since he is aware of this, plus in his current condition, he can't hope to stop them anyways. He just tells them to stay focused and to not let their emotions cloud their judgments. He knows they have been training hard since they came back from their last encounter with Itachi. Furthermore, he says that he'll make sure to handle things with Tsunade. The two Uchiha's tell their farewells and exit the village, making their way to Itachi. As this is occurring, Danzo and Kabuto make their move. Danzo's root and Anbu, with partnership with the Sound 4, locate where Orochimaru is being locked up. With Danzo's knowledge and the Sound Force power, they are able to break Orochimaru with little difficulty. With no time for the Leaf Village to react, Orochimaru escapes the Leaf and is brought back to one of his hideouts where Kabuto is awaiting him. This is when Kabuto informs Orochimaru about Danzo's plan and for his reason to help him escape. Orochimaru just villainously laughs and says that the smug bastard has him exactly where he wants him and an offer he can't refuse. Danzo's request is for Orochimaru to take custody of Naruto for a few years and train him. In return, Danzo will provide Orochimaru with the perfect body, Sasuke's. At this point, Orochimaru is suffering a great amount of pain from his soulless arms, and he can't wait any longer for Sasuke. He has to exchange bodies for the meantime until the next opportunity. Sasuke and Naruto have just arrived at the location where Itachi is waiting for them. The both of them know that even with their powerful sets of abilities and all their training, they still don't stand a chance against the genius of an older brother individually. They will have to rely on their brotherly bond and teamwork to gain an edge. They know as long as they have each other, they will be able to conquer any tragedy thrown at them. The two enter a room and see Atachi sitting on his throne and welcomes his younger brothers. 
He says how great it is to see the both of them in great health. Neither of the twins can stand even looking at their murderous older brother, but before Naruto can charge at Itachi, Sasuke grabs him. Sasuke tells him that this is just an illusion, and he proceeds to release it. Itachi is quite impressed by the display of visual prowess shown by Sasuke. Sasuke tells Itachi that they don't need to hear his worthless praises. He has no right to even stand in the same room as them for what he did to their clan. Naruto then adds that they will end his tyranny and make the village a safer place. Naruto and Sasuke, in synchrony, attack Itachi. Itachi, familiar with the extent of his younger brother's powers, can't hold back against them. The twins then send a large fireball with lightning towards Itachi. This creates a giant explosion, blowing out the roof of the room. After the smoke clears, the twins sees Itachi's clothes all tattered up, but overall, he's okay. The three of them then head to the roof of the building. Naruto then uses his wood release to hold Itachi in place, and Sasuke then burns the wood using Amaterasu. Just as the two think they got their older brother, Itachi's body disappears into dozens of crows and manifests behind them. The two are then kicked back a few meters, but they are able to grab their bearings. The two twins then decide that they need to lay down a more powerful move if they hope to get some damage on Itachi. Sasuke distracts Itachi with a barrage of kunais while Naruto prepares a giant kitten. Itachi can see Naruto is planning something, but can't counter as Sasuke is holding him back. Sasuke then backs up, and as Kirin is striking Itachi, Sasuke adds on a blast of Amaterasu to strengthen the blow. The twins hope that that was enough to take out Itachi, but then a large orange figure starts to emerge from the black flames. Itachi, now injured, has activated his trump card, his Susanoo. Naruto and Sasuke can't believe Itachi could survive that attack, and they have no time to waste. They quickly activate their Susanoo and Wooden Golem combo to counter Itachi's. With the two giant figures clashing, it looks as if the two are equally matched. The fight goes on with explosive blows happening from both Itachi and the twins. It is a game of endurance at this point, and Itachi knows well that he doesn't stand a chance in that aspect. So, as a last attempt, he uses his gourd to seal Naruto's wooden golem, leaving only the two Susanoo standing. As the Susanoo's complete one final clash with each other, the chakra of both Itachi and Sasuke are almost depleted. Itachi and Sasuke are standing before each other. Itachi looks weakened, and Sasuke tries to use this opening to attack, but before he can, he feels an extremely sharp pain in his eyes, and everything starts to get blurry. Sasuke now is completely helpless against Itachi, and Naruto sees a horrifying scene. He is about to witness Itachi slay Sasuke, but before Itachi can do anything, the voice in Naruto's head and the pain he has been feeling explode inside of him. He snaps. In an almost instantaneous motion, as if Naruto time skip, he is on top of Itachi with a Chidori piercing right through his heart. Naruto then looks at Sasuke and is about to steal his twin brother's eyes as instructed by the voice in his head, but he stops just short of doing so. Even with him now being controlled, Naruto refuses to hurt his twin brother. Naruto then begins yelling in agony and piercing wood begins to shoot from his body. This pushes both Sasuke and Itachi off the building down into the trees below, hidden from view. Naruto then collapses to the floor. A few moments pass, and Kabuto reveals himself from the shadows. He sighs as the plan didn't go exactly how Danzo instructed, but nothing can be done at this point. What had happened earlier was that Naruto had finally unlocked his manga Gyo Sharingan from witnessing his brother Sasuke almost slain by his evil older brother. The problem with that is that the Koto Amutsukami Danzo had placed on Naruto as a kid was finally fully awakened, and Naruto was completely under Danzo's control, losing all sense of his past self. Naruto's free will was completely gone. Kabuto, assuming that the other Uchiha's were wiped out from Naruto's burst of outrage, takes Naruto's unconscious body back to Orochimaru's hideout. With Sasuke still with Itachi, and Naruto taken under the control of the dark side, the fates of Orochiha twins are not looking too good. The lives of these two are about to change dramatically in the next coming years. And that's where we're ending Season 1 to What If Naruto Was an Uchiha. 
All the next parts will be taking place in Naruto Shippuden. Also, if you want to see an alternate perspective, I'll be uploading What If Rock Lee Was the Nine Tail Shinchuriki, which takes the perspective of Rock Lee, aka Menma Uzumaki, and will be following him in this same universe. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay up to date with this ginormous story that is coming and playing out for all you guys. So, without further ado guys, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Neon, out.